Hi again. Uh, as before, we were looking at what you get in the box with the uh, Srikam SP015. Uh, what I thought I'd show you this time is actually how to set it up, uh, how you can get your best results from the camera. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the, uh, the plastic cover. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in. Uh, first of all, I'm going to plug in the network cable. Uh, you don't have to do this just yet, but it's a, it's a good idea to. So if we now plug it in, Right. What you can see the camera doing at the moment is it's actually uh, doing a calibration. Uh, this basically makes it turn around in each direction uh, until it gets a stop point, uh, then goes back in the opposite direction and pretty much uh, sets off its range of motion. Uh, and from then, what you've got to do is you go to the uh, Srikan website, as I said in my last video, uh, you register for an account. Uh, I know this might scare a lot of people, you know, sending your details over to China. Uh, so I would recommend using a password uh, that you don't normally use. Uh, I'm absolutely quite confident that there's nothing to fear with this. But, you know, if you're, uh, if you're one of these sort of uh, conspiracy theorists, or, or you just really want to be careful then certainly don't use your bank account password or your uh, or your Gmail or Outlook or work or anything else password even if you use it temporarily it's it's fine uh, but what you've got to do once you go from there uh, it will allow you to uh, put in that app uh, now <coughs> excuse me now if we go over to the app uh, if we've got the phone here, well, I've got a screen capture. So if we if we pull the phone to one side, uh, right, and then we go over to the app, and we want to add a new device. Right on the side of the camera, usually on this sticker, you'll see an ID. So what I need to do is I need to put the ID into the application. And then we select next as you can see this is your opportunity to give it a name so for this I'm just going to give it IP cam 2 it asks you to input a password now I've actually already done this once already so I've changed the password the password that they normally give you is 888888 do not keep this whatever you do you can go all over the internet and find all of these websites that say look at these open webcams please do not use whatever standard password that they give you so uh, I've already uh, changed it the password so then we can select next as you can see the device is online right so as it, it's even honest with it for the security, you'd better change the password immediately. I've already, uh, I've already changed this password, so if I was to put in those six eights, this would be the best time to do it. So I'm going to select skip. It's asking me for my Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't normally use the. You are probably going to uh, blur this out anyway, but I don't usually use uh, that particular password. So I'm going to put in my uh, my Wi-Fi password. And then we can next. Now at the moment, yep, fantastic. As you can see, it's picked up the camera. Uh, it's got my existing camera there as well that's pointing out to the road outside my front door. Uh, at the present moment, that's really just pointing out to nowhere. Uh, So like my, uh, my screen capture's gone all to nuts, so let's just put that back. All right, fantastic. All right, the reason it's looking a bit odd at the moment is because it's gone into, uh, it's gone into uh, landscape mode rather than portrait. So we'll go back 
and put it back into correct screen capture mode there we go right <coughs> now we've done that what we can do is we can go into the camera and change the settings actually in the camera itself so if we open that camera up as it goes into a For the sake of argument, let's just leave it in that orientation for the time being. Right, we'll go into the settings, and this is where it all go mad again. Oh, nice, it stopped. So we'll go back into that settings. And what we want to do is you want to change the network settings. Uh, there is a reason behind this, and that reason is because it's if you've got it for Wi-Fi or wired or uh, if it's got uh, if it's on Wi-Fi for example right it's going to ask you for its network settings again so I would suggest in all honesty uh, make sure you have a manual fixed IP do not go with DHCP because the minute you unplug it uh, and you plug it back in again you're gonna get a new IP uh, now if you're using something like iSpy, that's going to cause you problems. So it's a good idea to have a fixed IP uh, uh, and that way you can always call on it. Uh, if you're only having one camera, it's not really a big problem. If you're only using the app, it, again, it's not a big problem. Uh, but certainly, uh, I would suggest making sure that you are... Uh, you record what IP you're going to give it because you are going to need it later on in order to uh, move over to something like either Blue Iris or iSpy. So any which way, I've given this the 192.168.0.166 regular subnet, everybody's same gateway 192.168.0.1 and the same DNS. Uh, once you've set this up, uh, that's fine, you can go back uh, and you can go to your camera. And if I choose the right camera, which at the moment it's not. Ah. There we go, there's the absolute mess of my desk, uh, just while we're setting it up. Uh, it's, as I said, it's got pin, uh, pan, tilt and zoom, uh, so you can go in, you can move it around. So, uh, if you want to correct presets, press the preset button, wherever you want the camera, it's like your radio in your car, you just get to the one that you want, keep your finger on it, and it will say preset settings succeeded. That's all you've got to do. So no matter where you go with the camera, right, you can go back and say preset one. And it'll take it back to where that preset is. You can also record on the app, which is fantastic. Uh, just press the record. Uh, so if something happens, you see it, you want to record it, just hit that button fantastic uh, they also do a desktop app uh, I think it's for Windows it might be for Mac as well uh, but they do a desktop app it's very similar uh, setup you ask it to find your camera it will find it put your details in not a problem uh, but as I said I do suggest make sure that you do change your password you can't change the username admin is admin but make sure that you give it a password that is very very secure uh, I watched a program on TV the other week, uh, I think it was Panorama, uh, about the risks of uh, smart home technology. Uh, and it, it was actually quite, it was an annoying program actually, because what they were saying is, is uh, to this hacker who was sat in a van outside, uh, they said, well, we've had to give him uh, how many letters your password was uh, and what your encryption uh, was. Uh, and... Uh, what he's done, he, he's hacked into your system uh, and uh, we, we didn't want a too complicated password, but we've hacked into it and now he can control your Amazon and, and turn your lights on and off. He can even order things for you uh, as if he were you, like a big computer or a widescreen TV. They really put the scary scaries at the people, but what they didn't actually uh, emphasise is the fact that if your password is that lame, 
in all honesty, if your password is that lame, your whether they can turn your lights on or not is the least of your problems in real terms. Uh, if they can get into your uh, into your into your local network because you've got a, a completely vulnerable password, uh, then your smart home is not going to either save you, and it, it's not the thing that's at risk. You know, everybody has passwords like password or their kid's first name or their date of birth. Never ever do that. Always use a term of phrase. Uh, uh, break it down into maybe the first letter or the last letter. Uh, do capitals, do numbers. If it allow you, do uh, things like exclamation marks or asterisks or anything else. Do something you can remember, but by all means, you know, smart home technology, it is a risk. If It's like saying, you know, uh, don't have a TV in your house because somebody's going to steal it. And what we've asked you to do is leave your front door open uh, or, le or leave your keys in the front door. Go out for an hour. And when you come back, somebody may have stolen your telly. Right. <coughs> uh, now we've set everything up. Uh, what we can do is we can go over to an app like iSpy. Uh if you bear with me, I'll pause the video and then we can go over and we can uh, we can set it up and we can add uh, your uh, your camera to uh, the iSpy application. So let's pause and we'll uh, we'll go from there. Okay, right. What we've got to do now is uh, we'll download the uh, sixty-four bit I spy uh, application I will put the uh, link in the uh, in the description what we want to do is we're going to add the new camera that we've just actually uh, added we know what the IP is uh, you can go to settings uh, and get the IP back from the camera in, in this instance it's uh, let's have a look I think it was uh, 166, but we'll, we'll try uh, 166 and uh, 154 because I did set this up before. So what we're going to do is we want to add and we want to add an OnVIF camera. Right, now as you can see, at this present moment, I've still got the details in there as to what it was before, which is the IP address, the port uh, and the device service. Uh, we want to put in the uh, the username and password. So in this instance, we know it's admin. And I'm going to put in my password that I've given it. And then we can change the transport to UDP because it's not TCP on this particular version so and then we next it from there it's given us a couple of options uh, 640 by 360 uh, it, it can go I was wrong in my last video it doesn't go up to 1080 it actually goes up to 720 which is actually sufficient uh, but here it's saying that you want to do it at 640 you just say okay not a problem Right, is it asking you what all you want for your preferences for your camera? Uh, let's just bring this within the uh, screen capture. Uh, right, so there's your, uh, if you want to name it, uh, if you want motion detection, uh, your, pin, uh, your pan, tilt and zoom settings, uh, where you want to keep your images, uh, where you want FTP, where you want it stored, etc, etc. And what we'll do, uh, we don't need to do anything else, we just click finish. Right, and there you have the camera. It's all picked up. You can see you can change its name. Uh, there is settings for everything, uh, but from that you can set up all your recorders. I've got this up to automatically record on motion, so it's flagging red and and, and on and off at the present moment because it was set up for that. Uh, but that's that. That is the Srecom SP015 external pan, tilt and zoom camera. Thank you very much. See you next time.